Hello everyone, this is Audrey, Stitchywitch42. This is usually my channel about cross-stitch life, the universe, and everything. But today it's about journaling. I have a project that I wanted to share with you. I am making these little accordion style three signature traveling journals. Traveler's journals, if you will. That's what I'm calling them. There is plenty of space for journaling on the back. There are three signatures in each one of them. And I'm going to take you through the process of how it went from this to this. So, the first thing I need to do is I need to cut down my manila folders. I like using just a regular size manila folder. I know that I want it to be 8 inches in height. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm just going to cut it down to that height. Now I have this and I need to turn this into a trifold. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take how much room do I have on my desk? I am going to take my scoreboard and my scoring tool. You don't need a scoreboard, you don't need a scoring tool. I can do the same thing using my um, cutting mat underneath and a ruler and my X-Acto knife. It's just that this is easier. So. I want to set it up. I want the fold to be as tight over there as I can get it, and then I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to score it at the three inch mark. This is usually where I mess up because I will fall out of the groove with this. So I've got my first score in. I'm going to fold it backwards. And I'm going to press it down. Now I'm going to turn it around so that it's this way and I'm going to snug it up and I'm going to come here again to the three inch mark, make my score, this one is going to be folded back. I'm going to press it down, and for right now I'm going to leave that there. Now I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Snug that center fold up to the side of my scoreboard, come in and score at three inches. fold it backwards, and I can already tell things are not lining up. In my world, perfect doesn't exist, and I'm good with it. And then I'm going to take this one, again snugging up that side there, and I'm going to make a score here. scoreboard. Now, using my X-Acto blade, I'm going to open it up and where this last score is here, I'm going to line that up on my grid down below 
and because I know I want three inches, I'm going to line this up three inches from that line there, and I'm going to cut off this little strip right here. Always close your X-Acto blade when you are done. We don't need blood on our projects. So I have an accordion there. But when I look at the front of it here, this is on the upper side of my journal, and I don't want it. I want it to be on the bottom side of my journal. So I'm simply going to turn everything around. So, now you can see that I have this as the front of my journal. I like this. On the first one that I made, I did the same thing, and I lined the bottom part here with some lace, which is kind of what I want to do again on this one for the style that I have on mind. With this one, I simply, when I put on my cover sheet, I just cut a three inch section of my cover sheet and covered the whole thing. And then when I covered the back side, this was no longer visible. So you can choose how you want the front of your traveler's journal to look like simply by whether you go with the folds in the manila or the curves in the manila folder, or if you decided that you wanted to cover the whole thing there. And as you can see, I've got this lined up with the front edge there. It doesn't meet up with the rest of the pages, the folds in there. That's why I'm going to put some lace there, because the lace will bring it out to that edge. So, I now have this here. There will be one, two, three signatures in there. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to cover the front. This is the piece of paper that I want to use. So, looking at this, I use my mat board to do most of my measuring. I need about two and three quarter inches to cover that. I like that side better. Again, taking my X-Acto blade, line it up, and I make a cut. When I am cutting, my eyes are always on the blade because safety is a priority. So, this is what is going to go on the front here. Now if I left it like that, it would be perfectly fine. I could still add my lace on the edge of it and I just have a rectangular cover. But again, like I said, for this one, I actually like that curve there. So, glue. Grab a good, good glue stick. Put a good amount of glue on there. And yes, I know I've put glue where I'm going to be cutting, but you know, that's generally what I do because for me, it's easier to get this put on and then trim it down. I want to line this edge up. And then I'm going to press it down really good from the back side. And then I am going to very carefully take my X-Acto blade 
and I'm going to start trimming this. Paying attention to the edge of the folder. Coming around the curve. And hope that I've cut through my paper, which, you know, apparently I didn't. Real life, people. Real life. Okay. It's a bit fuzzy there. That's okay. There will be ink on here, which will hide some of the fuzzy. But the reason why I chose this one is I have this lovely vinyl sticker. And I want her to be on the front of it. And she's going to go up there. Now, she sticks over a little bit, but again, there will be lace behind there. So. Okay. Now what I'm going to work on is I'm going to cover the whole inside of this. And I'm not going to record the whole process of doing that. I'm going to show you how I start it. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a patchwork of papers inside here. I will get started. I'll show you what I'm doing. I'll turn off the camera, I'll finish it, and I'll come back. So I take pages and it doesn't really matter what's written on them. I'm just going to make some long strips and I'm going to glue it and I'm going to put it down. I'm not inking the edges on anything at this point and because I'm using this to cover I'm just going to use my manila folder as my glue board because if I get glue on here, it's going to be covered. Excuse me while I answer my phone. Sorry about that. It was a phone call I had to take. I have a doctor's appointment on Friday and apparently they wanted me to check in. So I have a stack of random papers, different fonts, different colors. Um, at this point, like I said, the whole idea is just to cover the inside of this folder. So I'm just going to glue and stick down. I also like to use um, tea dyed pages in here too, simply because I would like some journaling spots on the inside itself. So I'm just going to go through.
Well, let's see if I can find a piece of paper I want to use. This was a nice piece of tea stained paper that I had, but it had some writing on the back of it. So it's perfect for gluing on the inside of this cover because it will provide a space to journal or whatever. I am trying to get up to the edges, overlap each piece as I do this. Sorry, I'm out of frame. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish doing the rest of this because that's the longest part and it's pretty boring. I think you can see what I'm doing. I'll be back when I get this covered. Okay, so I have the inside covered. It looks a bit of a mess. I'm going to come around and I'm going to trim up excess that's hanging over the edge, trying to not cut the manila folder. Knock things over on my desk in the process. And get rid of those. So at this point I'm going to once again go through and crease all my edges. This is just getting the paper use to the shape it's going to have. It also allows me to find places where I may have to add a little bit more glue. All right, there you are. See, that messed up a bit there. But this is where we can fix some of these issues. So you've got areas where papers meet up and you can use things like tea bags. I have a stack of these that my friend Lori sent to me. And I love using tea bags. It adds texture. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a section of it off. It doesn't matter what the shape of it is. Get some glue on it. And I'm going to use this to cover corners. It makes it more muted. It adds a little bit of texture. It doesn't matter if you use big pieces or small pieces. The idea right now is just to cover any areas that might need a little bit of help. That was an area where three pieces of paper came together. Mm. By adding that tissue over it, it's going to strengthen it and help keep the pages 
the individual pieces of paper from coming up, lifting. If I go over folds, I try to make sure that I'm going to go over a reasonable amount on both sides, simply so that this doesn't lift. You can do this with washi tape. You can do use um, scraps left over from when you were tearing up your paper to cover this. And basically, I'm just going to use this whole piece of tea bag and cover random areas. And then I'm going to add some washi tape. I like having a fairly neutral background in these journals. What I'm hoping to do is get some of them up on my Instagram, Stitchywitch 42 d stash. And have them for sale. But I wanted to have at least three of them made before I did that. I don't know why, it just seemed like a good idea for me. But I think that by having a fairly neutral background in here, if somebody were to purchase this, they can then add their own touch to it. And if my tea bag tears when I'm putting it down, I'm good with that. Again, I'm just trying to cover corners and make everything lay a little bit flatter. And when I'm done with this, I am going to add some washi to it. Now, when you're doing this, if you're making one on your own, and if you do, I would love to have you tag, send me a picture of it on Stitchy Witch 42, and let me see what you're doing. I know when I did my first video, I had a lady show me the pictures of what her daughter had done with the journal that I was making for the ladies at work. So if somebody else decides to craft one of these, um, let me know. I'd like to see what you do. Okay, that's a good spot there for that. And one last little tiny piece of tea bag. Okay. So I have this kind of vellum -y. There it is. vinyl-y washi tape. And again, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to cover more corners. we could use some. If I'm going over a fold, I want to make sure that I've got it on both sides of the fold. Okay. 
And again, just putting it in random places, covering edges, helping to keep the base layer down. And you can do as much decorating at this point as you want. It's entirely up to you because, again, you're going to have three signatures. And you see, that one's lifting right there. Good to catch it. Press it back down. But this is the time to just play with your background. Fill it in as much as you want. Images you don't want on your washi tape, take them off. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, I have this covered. I am now going to put my signatures in. For this, I'm using a all-purpose floss, an awl, and a needle. Now, when you're putting a signature in, they say to use three times the length of your journal. My journal is eight inches. So I'm cutting a piece of thread here that is 24 inches long which is way longer than I need, but I'm going to double it. Because my signatures only have three pages in each one of them, this is heavy enough string thread to do this with. I made myself a little template when I started this. It has my size on there. I like using a five-hole pamphlet stitch. And I had already gotten my signature is ready. I use three pieces of paper in there because this is a small journal, but that gives you six sheets or 12 pages to write on. And what I'm going to do, I've already put them together, is I'm going to fit my template in there and center it up And I'm going to put a paper clip on my pages just to hold them together while I'm doing this. Okay. So I'm going to take my first valley there. As you can see, I've got my template in there. I have my needle threaded and I'm going to line up my template with the top and the bottom of my journal. Take my awl and carefully pop it through to the outside and you hear it and you feel it. I do. Remove my template, take my needle and put it in through the center hole, leave a fair side tail, I go one row over or one hole over and it doesn't matter if you're going up or down. Cut 
come up, go down in the bottom hole, Now I'm going to take my center tail there and I'm going to take it down. I'm going to hold it with my thumb just to keep me from pulling it through. I'm going to go back through that second hole again. There are many ways to sew in signatures. This is just the way I like to do it. I go back down through the center. I'm going to come up to the next hole from the outside. If I have problems finding the hole, like you just saw, I'll go in from the inside and run my needle back through it just to make that opening a little bit wider. Back down through the top hole there. Back in through this one. I have this string on this side, so I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to slide it underneath here. So I have a string on both sides, and this is where I'm going to tighten it. And I'm going to pull it snug, but not snug enough to warp my pages. One knot. Two knots. I like three knots. Cut it off, and I have my first signature sewn in. So I'm going to pause, be back in a minute when I have the other two done. Okay, I'm back. I am just finishing sewing in this last signature. snug it down and I like to do three knots just to make sure that it doesn't get unraveled. Now like I was saying I like to do a five hole pamphlet stitch. One of the reasons why I like doing a five hole pamphlet stitch is because not all of my pages in my signatures are the same length. So, when I have a long piece in the center of my signature, it doesn't make a difference here. But when I have a shorter piece in the center of my signature, this hole right here is right at the very edge. But it's still caught by three others. And this hole is right above the page. So this page is still in there just as firm as any other. So, currently what I have and I spent a lot of time smashing and smushing these and just getting them into shape is I have my accordion folder. I have three signatures with three pages each. There is that one. This is actually an envelope that I opened up. Then I have some graph paper here in the center. I liked this part of the envelope here. I figured it'd make a flip out. And that's the first signature. The second signature has this sheet of paper in it, some graph paper in there, and then the smaller piece, like I said. I have paper glued to my fingers. Oh well, it happens. Um, and I have a little envelope in here that I'm going to add as a flip up. And then my th third signature, words, got a small piece there I can add on to this and then I've got a longer piece in the center so I have all three of my signatures into this. Now I'm going to cover the back. So what I picked out for the back 
is somewhere on my desk is this. It's another piece of Tim Holtz paper and it's already just about the perfect size. But I like that because it will look really nice there and make a fairly neutral back cover. So once again with the glue stick I'm going to cover this really liberally with my glue. I've never had a journal come apart that I glue together. Sometimes, depending on what I want to do, I might sew around it. This one is going to get a little bit of sewing on the front, but for now, I'm not worried about it. Okay. I'm scooching that right up to the edge there, getting it all smushed down, and then I'm going to trim it. So the next thing to do is to cover the back side. And for that, I have some vintage scrapbook paper. It's a lovely color. It's a nice texture. And what I need to do is I need three pieces that are just under, I need four pieces, because I can math, just under three inches wide. So I line my edge up on my grid down below me. I'm doing two sheets of paper at a time. I like the torn edge, which is why I discarded the first two that I tore off. Okay, now I have all four of them and they need to be eight inches long. So I'm coming in just under 8 inches and I'm going to tear off this little strip and I can do all four of them at one time. These will now be glued onto the back of this so I can lay that out flat. I will be washing my desk when I am done with this. Maybe a little trim right along there. Uh oh. Real life people, I just cut the string. 
that holds my signature in. I will be fixing that. Hold on. So my husband had to come up and tell me some stories about his Jeep. It was a good thing that I was in the middle of fixing my boo-boo that I made when I cut the thread for my signature. So I took advantage of him being up here and I went ahead and I covered all the back of this with paper. I also added my lace trim to the front and I did a little bit of sewing around the front and the back. So right now it's almost complete. At this point I'm going to go around and I'm going to ink it all, all the pages up. I think you've seen inking before. I'm going to be using Distress Oxide Gather Twigs. <coughs> but basically what I want to do <coughs> excuse me, got a tickle is I want to go around and I want to cover every edge on both sides. And it's just, I like the grungy look. And I think that it just adds a detail to it. Now, a smart person would have done this before they put the lace on. And we're just going to leave it at that. But I'm just going to get all the edges I have to fold it again the opposite direction to get some of these. And this might be where I see I've got a little bit extra paper instead of cutting this time. I'm just going to tear a little bit there. Now I'm going to cut. That's not a signature page. But I think by adding the ink around it, it just gives it an added detail. The paper is thin enough that you can see the texture of the manila folder, the center ridges there. I kind of like that. But like I said, I'm just going to go around, I'm going to get every edge, front and back. These really don't take very long to make. I think I figured out that if I can sit down and do one start to finish, it takes about three hours if I don't make mistakes. This one probably didn't take as long as that. It may have taken a little bit longer because of the interruptions from my husband and fixing mistakes and I'm not counting. But I like these journals. I want to get one made for myself. Um, like I said, I'm going to be offering these up for sale on my Instagram at stitchywitch42dstash. I don't use that for anything other than selling items that I make.
but I'm thinking that later on this week I will get all three of these journals put up for sale on my D stash page if anybody is interested in purchasing one of them. I still haven't decorated the front of it. Sometimes for me that's the hardest part. I want to make these journals so that they appeal to the majority of people out there, which is why I go for the neutral colors, the neutral background on the inside. I figure if it's neutral, anybody can work with it and they can add their own touches to it. Um, I know that there's a lot of people that do commission work. That's not something I'm interested in. I did that when I first started doing some journaling and I, I, I struggled with it. So, I don't do commission work. But I like these because they're three by eight. They're something you could tuck in your purse. They've got three signatures with three sheets of paper each, so that makes about 36 pages for journaling in here. I'm going to add some fold outs to them. Um, I just think they're a good size. Okay, I think I've got everything covered. So, here's the front cover, sans decoration. Open it up, neutral background, three signatures with three pages each, neutral background. Need to glue that down there. Okay, next page, next section, we've got three there, and the last one, we've got three there, and then on the back, there's four areas where you can add journaling there. So, in here, I have this. This is an end of an envelope that I covered with some paper and I thought that it would make a nice flip up here on this page and I thought if I put it over the top I have a flip up it'll make a pocket there and if I just glue it on the sides there it makes a tuck spot right here so Let's get out the art glitter glue and just make a line there and a line there. So now there's a little tuck spot here, and there's a flip up here, and like I said, because it was an envelope, it flips open and something can be tucked inside there. I think I have, I think I have, I think I have, I think I have one of the messiest desks around. So where was the one with the short page that I wanted to add to? Is that here? Right here. With this one, I could simply add another piece of paper on there 
and extend that side out. I could either bring it all the way in and extend it out. And if I added it here, I could actually have a little pocket there. I could leave this page longer. Yep, I think that's what I'm going to do. It's the process. So let's go there. Tear that off because I don't like to measure. Get rid of the bubbles. So now there's a tuck spot here. Wipe off any extra glue from that side. And that can be decorated. This little area here can be covered with another little piece of washi just to cover that edge there. And we've got another little pocket and a longer sheet of paper to write on there. I will add another fold out in the front section here, but my postcards are over on the other side of the room. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to finish decorating the front of this journal. And like I said, I wanted to use this vinyl sticker here. So in order to make her fit, I'm going to have to trim just the slightest little bit off there. Okay, she will fit there. Do I want to put something behind it? I had something to put behind it. This is a piece of Tim Holtz paper. Yeah. Another little piece of lace there. Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay. So let me trim this down a little bit because I don't want it to be quite so big. And then I'm going to distress the edges on this piece. Take my scissors. I'm 
just rough that up a little bit. Where's my ink? I'm telling you people, my desk is a mess. I put things down, it rolls underneath stuff. bit of my Aileen's glue. The art glitter glue works good for sticking down a lot of things, but when it comes to adding fabric, I find that the Aileen's works better. and will catch quicker. Put some of my art glitter glue there and get that put down. And now to try to get, oh, the backing off the sticker. Tweezers, tweezers, tweezers. Oh, tweezers. Where did you go, tweezers? Fine. Be that way. Okay. She's a clear vinyl sticker. So you kind of see the fabric through it, but I like it because you see the background paper behind it. So there you are. Start to finish a little 3x8 accordion style. Traveler's Journal with three signatures, three pages each, four areas on the back for journaling or decorating to your heart's content, and I will be putting this up on my DStash page at Stitchywitch42 DStash if you're interested. I hope that you found some value in this video. I hope that you will like and subscribe, and I would love comments. And until we meet again, my friends, live long and craft on. Bye-bye.